All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve these two games and try to calculate the dominant strategy equilibrium. So in this video, there are two important things to understand. One, what is dominant strategy? And two, what is dominant strategy equilibrium? Okay, well, the first game is relatively simpler than the other. In the first game, we have um, two players. I call them player A and player B. Each player has two actions, top, bottom for player A, left, right for player B. All right. So therefore, there, I mean, each player has two available actions. And then these are the payoffs. So there are four outcomes and the payoffs. Well, here the assumption, well, what are, what are those payoffs representing? Are they jail time? Are they profits? Are, I don't know. I don't care. So the payoffs are given to us. So these are the utilities of these agents if they uh, end up these outcomes. And the assumption is that these agents, these players are trying to maximize their payoffs. So the highest number is the best. So here, the highest payoff is six for player A and six for player B. This is not a symmetric game. So if you put a mirror here, three, six, three, zero, uh, but zero, three, six, three, so it's not symmetric. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the highest payoff for the A player, uh, he can achieve that only if the B player gets uh, to play left, for example. All right. So, uh, and, and symmetrically, uh, player B can get his highest payoff if player A happens to play top. So they cannot get their highest, but I mean, there's no outcome where those two agents will get their highest payoff simultaneously at the same time. Maybe one of them will, but not both. All right. Um, so in this question, the, the first question we need to ask, is there any dominant strategy? All right. A strategy that dominates the other. Um, so I'm going to talk about this game later. So let's focus on the first game here. Well, doesn't really matter f to which player you look first. Uh, let's look at the player A, the row player. Is there a dominant strategy? I mean, a strategy always better for him, meaning giving him a higher payoff. Well, remember, because player A is a row player, we're going to compare, uh, and the first numbers are always for the row player. So we're going to compare the first numbers across rows. All right, so across rows. So three versus six, zero versus three. And for agent B, we're gonna compare, because he's a column player, we're gonna compare the second numbers across columns, okay? So don't forget that. So here, for player A, because he's the row player, we're comparing across rows. Three versus six, so bottom is better. Three, uh, zero versus three, bottom is still better. So we, we keep, we, we compare this payoff with this payoff, all right? Um, so we keep B playing left. Well, in that case, six is better than three. So the bottom is a better strategy than top. But if B is playing right, not but, we can still say bottom is better than top because three is higher than zero. So whatever the opponent does, therefore, the bottom strategy will always yield higher payoff than top strategy, all right? So therefore, bottom is, a, is the dominant, because there's one dominant strategy for agent A, okay? Well, what about agent B? Well, for agent B, um, what we do, because he's column player, we compare the second numbers across columns. So three versus six, zero versus three. So the first column always yield a higher payoff than the first, a second column. That means left is the dominant strategy. Uh, strategy for B, okay? That means the agent, so these are the dominant strategy. By the way, if a strategy is dominant, the other strategy should be dominated, right? There are two strategies or two actions. If one is dominating the other, the other is dominated, right? 
Um, so here, the dominant, dominant strategy uh, means the, uh, the, the, the player A will never play the dominated strategy. And similarly, uh, because the uh, left is a dominant strategy, player B will never play the dominated strategy, which is right. So therefore, the bottom left should be the outcome of this game. All right. And so the bottom, the strategy of the first player, I mean the player A, and the strategy of the second player, I mean player B. So that strategy tuple is dominant strategy dominant strategy equilibrium all right very good now let's move to a slightly more complicated game well the sort of the main complication is still we have two players player a all right and then player b um, and then here the actions are named as l r m uh, left right middle uh, up, uh, center, down, or U, C, D, all right? So it's a three by three matrix, uh, mainly because each player has three actions, okay? But the approach will still be the same. Because player A is the row player, I mean the first player, the first numbers belong to player A, the second numbers belong to player B. And then the second thing, when we compare the strategies to find which one is dominant or dominated, for player A, we compare the numbers, the first numbers across the rows. And for the second player, we compare the second numbers across columns. All right. So now let's find the dominant strategy for player A and then dominant strategy for player B and then find the dominant strategy equilibrium. So for player A, is there a dominant strategy? So three, so I'm comparing the first numbers across rows. So three versus four versus one. It seems like R is better than L and M. So L is better than M, all right? So what you can do, you can say R is better than, I mean, all right, so this is greater than sine, I know, but um, you know, just for my own notation, I just call it better than. L, R is better than L and better than M, okay? Well, what about here? I have L zero, R, two and m2 uh, m0 so i have r uh, better than m which is equal to i mean the same as l right so it seems like r is getting a dominant strategy okay let's keep going i have to check so this has to hold for all cases all right it's it's very important so one three two so what happens here is r is better than <clears throat> m which is better than l okay so then I can conclude R is always better than, strictly, I mean better than other strategies, all right? And hence, R is the dominant strategy, dominant strategy for player A, all right? All right, well, you may say it's like, well, what if, for example, R was better than L and M here, but then also R is better than M and L here. But here, for example, say L was better than R and M, better. So that means then R is not a dominant strategy, okay? So this better than has to be true for all columns, all right? Because regardless of your, what, what your opponent does, <clears throat> the dominant strategy should yield you higher payoff, strictly higher payoff than others. Well, what if, for example, here R was the same as M, all right? Not better, but same. Well, we don't call it dominant strategy then, all right? So it's not dominant strategy. It has to be strictly better, okay? So the strictly higher payoff. These are important things to know. Um, so there is a concept, uh, a weak dominant strategy, but we don't discuss it in this course. Um, so you can ignore. So whenever the, the, the strategy is sometimes the same, but sometimes better, we don't call it dominant. So it has to be always better. Okay. Well, what about <clears throat> player B? So here, remember the player B is the column player. So we compare the second numbers across uh, columns. 
All right, so five versus zero versus seven. So it seems like, not it seems like, but it is the case that D is better than U, which is better than C, right? Because seven is higher than five, which is higher than zero. Okay, well here, um, seven, two, and two. So C is better than um, U, which is equal to D. Okay, so as you see, we're not even looking at the third row, I can just count as, you know, say there is no dominant strategy for player two. Sorry. There is no dominant strategy for player B. Well, why is that? Well, because um, D is sometimes better than the other two strategies, but it is definitely sometimes worse. All right, so D does not dominate C. D does not dominate U. Well, what about U? Does U dominate C? No. <clears throat> U is actually dominated by C sometimes. I mean, I'm sorry, it's, it's a wrong lingo. Uh, so C is sometimes better than U and U is sometimes better than C. So there is no domination between U and C. The D cannot dominate U or C. And so, uh, so therefore there is no dominant strategy for player B. Okay, but nevertheless, we can calculate the dominant strategy equilibrium. And this steps we usually call iterated elimination of dominated strategies. And the idea is the following, which I sort of used here, but because there were only two actions and one was dominant and the other one was dominated. So the obvious outcome was, well, just write down the dominant strategies. But here, the dominant strategy for player A is R, so he should be playing R. Okay, but what about player two? What is gonna be the optimal strategy for player two? Well, that's the thing. What we say <clears throat> to find the dominant strategy equilibrium is the following. Look, in this game, both player A and B knows this game. I mean, they, they see this matrix. They both see this matrix as you see it, uh, clearly. And so player B is going to reason and say, oh, player A is a rational guy. He should never play M or L because R is a better option for him. So in his mind, the player B is going to think, oh, player A will certainly ignore L and M, like as if those strategies were never there. He will straight ahead go and play R for sure. So given that, what should I play, right? I mean, that's how player B should be reasoning, all right? Well, therefore, I shouldn't really worry about seven, five zeros here on the first row or seven, zero, and five, zero in the second row. I should just focus on this seven, two, and two in the column, uh, in, in the second row where player A will certainly play R. Well, clearly here, I'm trying to maximize my payoff. It means that therefore C is the better action than uh, U and D. It doesn't make C dominant strategy, but I nevertheless will play D because I know my opponent will certainly not play R. Um, I'm sorry. I know that my opponent will certainly not play M or L. He will play R. As a result of this, I should be playing C because that sort of maximizes my payoff in this game. So therefore, the dominant strategy equilibrium of this game is RC, all right, is the, is the dominant strategy equilibrium, all right, with a payoff of uh, two and seven, all right? So this is how we calculate the dominant strategy equilibrium in slightly more complicated game. We eliminate the dominated strategies for one player, all right? And then see, given that reduced game, all right? It's not really a game for player one because he's, he's gonna choose R for sure. Well, we ask now, is there any uh, you know, best strategy for player B. Uh, and well, if, if so, uh, we assume that he will not play the other strategies. So he should be playing C therefore. And so RC should be the outcome of this game. Uh, that's how we sort of calculate the dominant strategy equilibrium. All right, I hope that was clear.